Thank you. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, trying to calm down? <laughs> I am. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Deline. I'm from Smarto. And I'm here today to share with you a little bit more about uh, tips of successful app monetization for developers. Um, I sat through almost this entire session earlier on, and uh, it's it's very, very technical for me, but I'm sure it's not for you. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm going to co cover a couple of um, stuff. Uh, feel free to ask any questions or uh, if you feel that I'm going a little bit too fast. Um, we're going to talk about how, you know, after the, after the design, after you have set the infrastructure, after you have developed the application, how are you going to uh, go about distributing it? Um, especially if it's for B2B or even for B2C, how are you going to distribute it? How are you going to promote it through all the various sources? Um, but also at the end of the entire, what we might call a product life cycle, um, how are you going to set your pricing and revenue strategy around it? So I'm going to talk about mobile inventory. Everybody here understand the term mobile inventory? You know what it represents? You know what it is, right? Inventory that moves. <laughs> it literally does. <laughs> okay, uh, mobile inventory is your revenue stream. Choosing uh, optimal ad formats. We have a lot of ad formats uh, out there in the world. China has its own set of um, uh, standards. IB have their own set of standards. Um, how do we price the worth of your inventory? And uh, well, ultimately, how to get ready for integration. So um, very quickly, um, I have I have been um, help I think for around past ten years uh, working very closely with app developers or even uh, brand clients with what we call mobile properties. So um, way before iPhone came about, uh, mobile property to us come in a form of mobile web or mobile application. Then of course with the rise and uproar of um, smartphones, we have all kinds of applications around the world. We have games, of course. We have utilities. We have productivity. We have um, stock, ex stock exchange. We have how you go about tracking your movement, your exercise, um, uh, habits, and even food. You know, so um, we have that. So what I've been doing in the past is really to work with um, these um, brand clients or even app developers to distribute their apps around the world. And then after that, for the past um, seven years, um, I've also been working very closely with almost the same, same set of them to place advertisements into the application or mobile websites to generate revenue. Um, it may sound really easy, um, but there is actually a lot of strategy planning um, behind it. So. Promoting your app, I think right from the start of development, right from the start of building up the infrastructure and you know what kind of content to have around your app, more importantly is um, I think well, who are your target audience? You know, with the application that you have built, somebody has to use it, right? So who are your target audience? Are they for kids? If kids, ultimately you can't target them, right? You've got to target the parents. Or is it for working adults? Or what a lot of um, brand clients, you know, when they have uh, budget allocation discussions, they will ask for affluent users. Affluent users, how do we define them? Um, they are people with high spending power. Um, we also generalize their behavior on mobile. Uh, basically, where do they serve? So we assume, for example, um, uh, Traffic Cam. In Singapore, there's this application. Uh, how many of you have heard of Traffic Cam? Application. Oh, thank you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Not so much. <laughs> okay, so Traffic Cam, basically, uh, we have the satellites uh, around Singapore, and you can launch into this app, and you can see how the traffic condition is on different parts of the expressways around Singapore. So, who would you assume will be using this app? Any wild guesses? My cat. Yeah, <laughs> to move from the east to the west. Drivers, right? Drivers. So because, you know, if you want to drive in from Singapore to Malaysia, first thing you want to check, how is the traffic condition at, um, at the, at the uh, immigration area? So, next question. Where and how do you think your target audience go about knowing your apps other than the app stores? You know, are there minimal, uh, are there mini forums? You know, are there different sources uh, for information? You know, your target audience is going to, to know about new applications. Is it more word of mouth? So really, what is the context and the content of your application? Who are your audience? What are common sources for information? And uh, while promoting, while deciding and planning to promote your app 
and market it out there and distribute it out there to uh, certain geographies or certain uh, or globally, uh, we must decide then. What are the objectives of this of doing so? Do you want to make known, you know, um, your application? Do you want to tell the whole world that the company is making this particular application, or are you trying to drive downloads? So that is how we plan around promoting applications. Now, what the key message uh, for the next uh, twenty minutes is: um, mobile inventory. How you can monetize them? How? This is basically done through placement of advertisements. So basically, you are allowing advertisements, whether it is a small one, the full page one, is it an in-app video that you allow to be sitting in your application? What do they do? They help you to generate revenue. So when, do it, when is your app ready, really? There has to be a certain amount of what we call daily active users, right? So when your app is launched, number one, we want to drive installs. You know, X million of people have installed your application. Next, what, we, what you and I need to monitor very closely will be your daily active users. Now, this set of people has installed the apps. How many of them are using it day, uh, actively every day or your monthly active users? So at the end of that, how many impressions are you generating? So maybe before you put the uh, advertisements on your application, you may not be able to measure impressions. But what we can roughly estimate is the, the unique page views. So say for example, you have 1 million unique uh, users, active users on your application any given day. What is the average page view per user you are generating? So that is the estimated amount. And then after that, we'll be choosing the right formats. Now please, the last thing you want to do is to chase away your users on your app, right? So where you place the app is very important. You have to study how the user navigates around your app from entry right up to exit. What are they doing? What is the behavior you're expecting? Then you will decide where to put that advertisement. And we want to value a lot the user experience because I think, I think it has been, it has taken a while you know, from users to move from PC to mobile and we would love for them to stay there. And that is the space that they should be in. But that is why also a strategy needs to be planned around user experience. Now, after you have decided where exactly are the optimal positions for you to place the advertisement, then you have to choose the ads. Now, there are a lot of ads out here, right? We have banners, you know, we have, uh, we have the small ones, we have the medium rectangular ones, and we have the full screen ones, all right? So, um, these are easy names. So the small ones, we call it 320 by 50, literally, it's a small one. So on your, small, uh, on, your I, on your phone, for example, usually you will see a very small banner right at the bottom or right on the top, a small one. That's called a 320 by 50. And then you have the middle rectangle and you have the full screens, what we commonly call interstitials. And then, of course, you have rich media. Rich media basically... Um, it's a full screen, but they have video, you know, or there are movement. It is not a static image. So that's what's called rich media. And after that, um, with the uproar of uh, YouTube, of course, then we have in-app videos. In IAB standards, they call them VAST, V-A-S-T. And then you have native. So it also depends a lot on the content of, uh, and the layout of your application. So say, for example, you are developing something that is very text heavy, then native uh, will enhance or ensure a certain level of user experience because it sits right inside the context of your content. By the way, have you guys seen all these different ads, advertisements while serving on applications? How many of you find it irritating? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yes, so that is why we have been going around and trying to uh, share experiences with the, with the application developers because we as consumers, we find advertisements irritating. Me too, okay? Uh, maybe you shouldn't tell my CEO about it, but yes, I do. <laughs> but that is exactly why your placement of advertisement is so critical. You know, for example, if you're on a game, when do you show the advertisement? Not when they are playing the game, please, <laughs> right? But that is why planning and all <clears throat> is so important. <clears throat> Excuse me. So ad formats that work, what are the key types? So. Everyone is familiar with this, right? We have the 320 by 50 right um, on the top here. We have the medium rectangular. We have the full screen. 
we have fast, all right, and then fast. There are different uh, there are different ways of uh, costing behind it. You have the cost per impression. You have the cost per view. And then after that, native, which I mentioned, it sits nicely into the content uh, of a very text-heavy application, okay, or interstitial, which is a full screen. Think of your users. This is this has to be the key thing in every step that we take, all right? We do not want to disrupt the usage. We do not want to disrupt their navigation. We do not even want to disrupt the intent of using the application. Okay, relevance. So, by understanding your target audience, then you can decide what kind of advertisements is relevant for your users. At the end of the day, it's your application, it is your target audience, they are your users. We have to protect their interests. So, say for example, if um, I am on an e-commerce application, what kind of advertisements will not be relevant for an e-commerce user, like you and I? Maybe a game? It's so strange, right? I mean, you're trying to purchase something online and then you see a game. But what will be relevant, for example? Maybe an advertisement from uh, Marina Bay Sands? Maybe, right? Or um, finance? You know, because at the end of the day, we also have to understand on the other side, where are the budgets going to and how do they target the audience? Understanding the geographies definitely helps. So with your application, can you tell which country major majority of the users are from? Are they from states? Are they from Europe? Are they from Asia? If in Asia, we are very, very fragmented here, exactly where? So that is also uh, very important because in different countries, for example, um, for the past few years, um, Indonesia, India has always been hot on toast. Okay, because budgets are really streaming in and they say, you know, Indonesia and India, they are huge market, you know, um, FMCGs, for example, fast consumer uh, moving goods, uh, they want to enter into these markets and also games, you know, then after that, next, they talk about China. Then after that, when they ask for APEC affluent users, they will always run after uh, uh, Singapore or Malaysia or Vietnam, this country. So understanding your geographies uh, is, is really going to be critical. Know the worth of your ad formats. Of course, they say the bigger, the more expensive, uh, which is true. But then again, I mentioned again and again in the beginning is that we do not want to disrupt the user experience and navigation of the users. So we have to be able to understand and strategize exactly where do we want to place the ads. Hmm, this can be a little bit tricky. Pricing the worth of an inventory. Of course, to us as developers, my inventory worth a lot, my consumers worth a lot, but how about in the eyes of the advertisers? Where exactly are the budgets going? I mean, they are the ones who, you know, who, who allocates the budgets, right? So usually, for example, for content-wise, um, news, utilities, games, or user-generated content, what kind of content do you have around your application? How about your audience profile? What type of consumers is using your app? This is not by I wish, this is by exactly who is using your application. Okay, and also the amount of user data, for example, the demographics. Are you able to capture, are they male or female users? Are you able to capture, for example, um, their, their age? You know, uh, are you able to capture their geographical location? So is this particular user based in India, um, based in Indonesia or Philippines or Vietnam? Where are they from? Secondly, price strategy. So with different geographical um, identification, the pricing is different. Very good example is uh, advertisers, they are willing to pay a high price for who? China users, Singaporean users, Malaysian, Vietnam, uh, Indonesia. Okay, don't ask me why, but this has been a trend for the past many years, especially what they call the premium users which, uh, who are your affluent ones. Okay, in China, in India, in Vietnam, these people generally, they travel all over the place, so they deem them as affluent. So um, your pricing strategy is very important. How about your price range? So say for example, in Singapore, if I'm talking about um, 320 by 50, the smallest advertisement you can find in any given application, in Singapore alone, the cost per thousand impressions uh, do we understand CPM here? Yes, cost per thousand impressions. So 
for for that uh, for the advertisement to uh, refresh a thousand times that is one thousand impressions right uh, in Singapore it easily costs uh, any given advertiser a CPM of about eighty cents USD that is the price that has been a trend so say for example in uh, in India uh, just on Friday CPM for premium users uh, it will cost about thirty five cents that's the average for at least the past two weeks. Okay, and it fluctuates up and down due to season, okay, um, because the season is tied in with budget allocation. So where there is lesser supply, the price is higher. That drives up price. So this is how we go about planning the pricing strategy. Placement strategy, okay, I cannot emphasize this anymore, but it is really critical because uh, the navigation flow is very important. So we want to ensure smooth navigation flow for your users and what ad formats uh, to have in each possible placement. So say for example, uh, before the user jumps from page A to page B, are you going to slot in an advertisement there? Is it, if you are, is it going to be a small ad? Is it going to be interstitial? Are you going to place a video? Are you going to force the user to watch a video before going on to the next step or downloading something? It's a strategy. Okay, if you ask me, please don't do that. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, so uh, it is a strategy right from the start. It's like developing any given application. You plan the infrastructure, you plan your audience, you plan how you want to go about doing it. Even for revenue generation, it is also very important because an app, you see the product life cycle, it drives up like that and then it will drop and then it will stabilize. So where is the point of your application in terms of product life cycle that is the best time for you to start placing ads and generate revenue? It is your strategy. So decide on ad formats, the placements, and work out the price points. Now there are different methods of integration. Uh, we have the SDK. Um, this is uh, far most, uh, most efficient. Okay, we have the server-to-server -server API and we have the ad tech. Today, I want to talk to you uh, a little bit more about um, SDK integration. So, uh, in any given SDK, right, of course, Smarto, we also have our um, SDKs, right, because our exchange, basically, uh, we work primarily with app developers uh, to monetize their applications. So, uh, at the same time, we also have an exchange of advertisers, currently about 400 over in the world, and then we, we will get them to place their budgets into our exchange and then we will then filter all these advertisements into the um, applications that we have on our platform. So it is, or any given SDKs that you look out there, it should give you full support for iOS, um, Android, Windows, and BlackBerry, okay? Uh, don't ask why the rest of the, are there, but there are still people who are trying to reach out to uh, uh, Windows Phone users. In certain markets, it is still very, very popular. That goes without saying, okay? Uh, cross-platform plugins, uh, for us in Smarto, we have uh, Unity and uh, Titanium for cross-platform development environments. Okay. Sorry. Uh, add quality control, okay, this is very, 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 very important, okay? The last thing you want to do is to have an advertisement that has an auto-redirect. How many have, of you have, how many of us have encountered auto-redirect ads? It's very, very irritating, right? Because you have the phone right there. Okay, this looks like a phone. Then you have a phone right there. And then when the advertisement is being served without doing anything, you're auto redirected to the app store. It's like, hello? <laughs> That's not even where I want to go. All right, so no, no, no. Okay, these ads are not supposed to be in the, adverti uh, in the advertising space. Okay, or um, what we also have, uh, for example, malware. You know, advertisements that causes malware, that is a very, very big no-no. So ad quality is extremely important in any SDK that you are about to use to integrate into your app in order to pull advertisement from different sources to generate revenue. Okay, so uh, what we have built is that uh, we have built an auto block, an uh, auto block of auto expandables. So we have auto play, we have auto expandables, we have auto redirect, all the auto stuff. You should, it should be blocked okay, in the SDK. And also um, reporting as well. Now, uh, a good SDK, anywhere you can find, it should be able to pull you reporting. So you have uh, proactive 
by blocking out all the auto whatever you know kind of advertisement but you are also reactive in terms of understanding what kind of advertisements has been served on your application okay also adapters for popular ad sources okay we have iAd, Mopub and also AdMob how many of you here is familiar with some of these names oh Okay, so uh, I at Mopa and uh, at Mop and even Smarto, we have been in the uh, mobile marketing space uh, globally for about ten years now. All these names have been around for about ten years. Uh, at Mop, I'm sure some of you might know they were bought over by Google about uh, three to four years back. Yeah. Um, also, better rich media handling. So we have well, we are currently uh, at M rate 2.0 now. So it handles it uh, very well, which means that when we display the ad, it is not uh, cracky. It is very smooth. All right. So deliver the delivering the ad is also very important. Also, complete ad formats. The SDK that you are about to use should be able to support all kinds of ad format. You know, so that when you decide two years down the road, okay, I think it's time for me to have vast, um, uh, vast videos. Uh, vast advertisements and then you have to integrate another SDK. It's going to be really cumbersome, trust me. So a uh, complete suite of ad formats should be offered to you in any SDK. And of course, uh, the SDK uh, browser, this is on um, Smarto's SDK um, because uh, it keeps the users uh, within the app when clicking in the banners. I mean, this happened like in the past couple of months, right? Yeah. Uh, identical integration for both um, smartphone and tablets because your app might be targeted to both set of uh, users. So the SDK is able to read uh, regardless of where your users come from, whether a phone or a tablet. So this is uh, the integration. Usually, like I mentioned earlier on in my slide, is that there are a few ways how you can integrate with different exchanges and platforms in order to pull the advertisement. But SDK... Um, so far has been the most efficient. Yeah, um, and also the size of the SDK matters. Uh, currently, SDKs in, the, in, in any given um, I add uh, Mopub or, or AdMob, it ranges about 400 over in size. Okay, and it also depends on the file size of your application because say for example, if you are developing a, a utility app, you do not want to integrate an SDK which has 700 over MB. That's, that's going to be crazy. So either you use one that is below 100 or you go for one that is open source. So that will ensure um, the, the, the efficiency of your application itself. Um, any questions so far? No? Okay. I'm done. <laughs> Thank you.